owe no one anything except to love each other, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know the time that the hour has come for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we first believed. The night is far gone, the day is at hand. So then let us cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling and jealousy, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. Today, really, what, I'm, what I, I saw in the readings, I mean, they're kind of heavy readings today. Um, but the one that, that really jumped out at me was the, the reading to the Romans. And we always have to remember what the situation is um, when we see these readings to different, uh, or these epistles or letters to different churches. And one was to the church in Rome. And um, obviously there were problems, as a lot of churches have, as a lot of families have, as a lot of group of people have. And Paul kind of lays out what the people know which is, he lays out the commandments or the boundaries which we, we have to live by. And he lays out kind of the top four, and you can read them there. No adultery, don't covet, don't steal. You know, those, those type of things that if we, if we live within those boundaries, we'll, be, we'll live pretty good lives. But then he goes the next step, and he really bases it on what he's, read about Jesus and that is to love one another or love our neighbors as ourselves and I just love the way the second reading starts out owe no one anything except to love one another I mean that's good advice right that's good advice 2,000 years ago it's good today and it'll be good 2,000 years from now as for one who loves another has fulfilled the law. And he's really writing to the, the Jews that were living, that had become Christians, and he's writing to us today. Because we, you know, have, have to deal with the world as it is. And I gotta tell you, I'm a little bit tired today. Because I woke up at like 2.30 in the morning, and the light was on, and I didn't know what was going on, and I thought my son was out because he's living at home now, and he's a late-night person, and I'm an early bird, and so we kind of live different lives. And, and I was a little, I'm a little worried about my son. He just got out of college. He's 23. He's got a nice, you know, bachelor of science degree, but it's hard to find work, right? And it, it's not just him. It's a lot of college graduates are coming out. They thought, oh, we could get a job, and there's no jobs. There's very few jobs. And the neighbor next door, her daughter was down over the weekend. We got to go with them and had a little picnic Friday night at the beach, which was real nice. And, you know, she's gone on to, to get a master's so that she can be kind of like have a one-up. So when she gets out of school in a year or two, she can get a job, right? So there's that, there's this, you know, but even people are saying with that, you know, there may not be jobs. And I mean, I know everybody that's sitting here, those that are working, raise your hand. You know, the ones that are working are the ones that are left over from all the layoffs. So you guys have like the pressure on you of doing two people or, and, and then, so you're, you're doing your job and you're doing your best, right? But then there's the possibility you can get laid off, right? Now, of course, now I'm looking over here at the retired people. <laughs> right now, they're okay, but you know, they're, and if you're in that situation, you've got a certain sum of money you got to live on, you know. And I know those who retired, you know, or the ones that are about to retire, you know, you're always thinking like, 
if I, if I go another year, can I make a little more money so that I can, you know, live the rest of my days, right? So we, we have, we're like faced with this really hard economy where there's really, you read the paper, there's not really hope of anything in the future. And then for all that aren't working, it's the same thing, right? You're, there's no, it wasn't like 10 years ago when you could just go to the labor hall and pick up a job and work for a day or work for, it's just not like that. But what, so what do we gather? You know, what can we, instead of just reading papers and, you know, worrying, and I, you know, I was worrying. I mean, I was up, I was wide awake worrying about all this stuff. But what can we get out of these old ancient books that give us some hope? And I think what we can get out of these are exactly what I started with. You know, owe no one anything except to love one another. And Jesus gives us that, it's in Paul, but obviously it's from Jesus, you know, to love one another as yourself. Because as things, as, as an economy or as jobs or as the stress of all these different situations, even being retired in a fixed income or being on Social Security or whatever it is, you know, as you're in these these kind of hard times when they feel like there's no hope, what do we have? And I say what we have here at St. George's is we have a community of people. And we can talk to each other and help each other out. Right? And our background isn't just as a social club. It's about loving one another. Now, Tony and I, we go to all these different meetings and different people here. We go to these meetings and they say, how can you grow the church and how can you do all these things? And they give you ideas. Like if someone comes to church, I'm supposed to write them a little note. Thank you for coming. We've done that. I've done that, right? It, it's good. It's good stuff and you need to do those things. But what can St. George be that no other place can be in this community? It's really to love one another. And what can we do here today that kind of expresses that love? What I like is afterwards we can sit next door and have a piece of cake and some coffee and cookie and just sit and talk to each other. You know what, I think that's a real kind of healing ministry and I realized that I went away for a couple weeks. You know, I told you I went to Costa Rica. I went to try to get some uh, intensive Spanish. And, and what I realized about the people in Costa Rica is they're, they're actually in the same situation we are. I mean, everything's down. You could tell that things were happening. They were building and they are going. And now it's, you know, the economy's down now, down there too. And, but what I did notice was that people talk to each other. They sit and actually listen to each other. And I think, you know, our society, we tend not to. You know, we tend to, we're busy, we go about our business, etc. But So what can we do here at St. George's that's different than what's going on outside? Sit and talk to each other. You know, I'm inspired, frankly, by what I see sometimes here. Here and then right here, right after church. People are talking amongst themselves. I see older folks talking to younger folks that are having problems, right? I don't see the young people here today, but we usually talk to them. I gotta go back out there and go find them. Get them back in here so we can just say, hey, there's hope, there's something, there's something's gonna happen. You just gotta keep poking around to find, find that hope. I mean, if we're, if we're known for anything, when it's all said and done, I hope we're known for loving one another. Now, there's a flip side to all that, too. And Jesus goes into it in the gospel. And he's really echoing the first reading from Ezekiel. Because as a community of Jews in Ezekiel's time, and as, as is done today, the Jews tend to get together in their community and they talk to one another. And if there's a problem, 
the idea is go to your brother or your sister that you're having a problem with one-on-one -on -one and see if you can work it out. And as it says in the gospel, I mean, this is tough love stuff. So if you love somebody, you actually go and do this. If you don't really like them that much, there's no action. But if you love them, you got to go out there and do the tough love thing and say, look, I think you're stepping outside the boundaries that we talked about. You know, the, the ones you, you're, you're, you know, you're coveting, you're, you're, you're stealing, you're, you're, you're cheating somehow. You're getting outside that boundary of what it is to be in a right relationship. And then if that person comes back, you've gained a friend, right? You've, re, you've gotten a new brother, a new sister. I mean, it's almost like you've got a new person. And then it's not doesn't end there. If that doesn't work, go get someone else and, and go. One or two other people and go talk to that person. Because if you really love them and you really want them back in your life, you'll do that. And then Jesus says, and if that doesn't work, tell it to the church. So then tell it to the community. And see if the community can, someone can convince them to come back and get inside those boundaries of how we're supposed to live our lives, what the commandments say. And if, you know, that's got to call. <laughs> Say, come on back. So, you know, and then, so you really kind of get three strikes. And then Jesus says, if not, treat them as an outcast as a Gentile, as a tax collector, even though Jesus went out to tax collectors and outcasts, which is, again, loving one another. All right, they're here. Good time. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> so uh, what, what we want to say is that, yeah, loving one another, it's, it's if we can just keep speaking to one another, and talking to one another and helping one another out. I think that's what defines St. George's as a community of people, as a community of, of people that are under the, the center of Jesus Christ versus just a country club because we like each other and we get along. It's a, it's a diverse community. And again, so yesterday I met at, at my home parish, which is St. Mark's. I was there for five, six, seven years. And I realized, you know what? I love these people. They really, they kind of help me poor, but you, and I still want to be with a lot of them. But this is the place where I want to be. And I have to, if we're going to define ourselves, and if I have to define myself, I want to be the guy that loves people and reaches out to people and sits with people and talks with people and when when need be pulls them back in and kind of pastors them back in but I I can't do it alone I want you all to be the same right because if our center is Jesus Christ the center is love one another as you know as your neighbor so that's the good news of today. And that's the good news we need to proclaim at St. George's. Love your neighbors yourself. When your neighbor steps out of bound, correct him or her and get, get that friend back. And then Jesus ends with a wonderful thing at the very end of, his, of the gospel today. When you ask for anything in my name, I'll be right there in the midst of you. <coughs> So it's not just us. It's always Jesus-centered. And we always include Jesus in that, that center of our lives. And if we do those type of things, we will be known for love. And I think that's the greatest thing.